Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about two more theories of money demand. Uh, Keynesian theory of money demand and Cambridge cash balance approach. First of all, we are going to talk about Keynesian theory of money demand. According to this theory, money demand means preference for liquidity. According to this uh, theory, money demand means preference of liquidity. That means people do money demand because they have desire to hold liquidity asset. Or we can say that people do money demand because they have desire to hold cash or any asset which they can convert into cash very quickly. And according to this theory, people do money demand or we can say that according to this theory, people have a desire to hold cash mainly for three motives. Transaction motive, precautionary motive and speculative motive. One by one we will discuss about these three motives. First of all, we are going to talk about transaction motive or we can say transaction demand for money. Transaction demand for money means money that is required for day-to-day -day transaction. Transaction demand for money means money that is required for day-to-day -day transaction. Income and transaction demand for money have a direct relation. If income increase, transaction demand for money will also increase. If income fall, transaction demand for money will also fall. In this equation, you can see TDM is transaction demand for money. Y is income. Transaction demand for money is function of income. That means transaction demand for money and income have a direct relation. Second is precautionary motive or we can say the precautionary demand for money. Precautionary demand for money means people wish to hold cash for any future emergency. Precautionary demand for money means people wish to hold cash for any future emergency. For example, any sickness, accident or danger of unemployment. And precautionary demand and income also have a direct relation. If income increase, precautionary demand for money will also increase. If income fall, precautionary demand for money will also fall. In this equation, you can see PDM is a precautionary demand for money, which is function of income. Means precautionary demand for money and income also have a direct relation. Next is speculative demand for money. Speculative demand for money means people wish to hold cash so that in future they can invest this money in money market. Speculative demand for money means people wish to hold cash so that in future they can invest this money in money market. For example, people wish to hold cash so that in future they can invest this money in bonds and uh, they will take uh, advantage of changing interest rate. And speculative demand for money and interest rate have an inverse relation. SDM is speculative demand for money, R is interest rate. Both have an inverse relation. That means when interest rate is very high, then speculative demand for money will less. But why when interest rate is high, speculative demand for money will less? Because speculative demand for money means money that we hold so that in future we can invest this money in bonds. But if at presently, if currently the interest rate is very high, then why should we wait for future? We will invest this money immediately. Na? We will presently invest this money in on bonds. That's why when interest rate is very high, presently interest rate is very high, the speculative demand for money will less because people will hold cash less and invest more money in money market. For example, invest more money for buying bonds. On the other hand, if, if interest rate is very low, then speculative demand for money will high because uh, during this time period, interest rate is very low. People will not uh, invest in money market. Instead of this, people will wait for uh, higher interest rate in future. So they will hold more money for speculative purpose if interest rate is very low. So we can say that speculative demand for money and interest rate have an inverse relation. If interest rate is high, that means speculative demand for money will low. On the other hand, if interest rate is low, that means speculative demand for money will high. Now we understand concept of speculative demand for money and liquidity trap with the help of this diagram. In this diagram on x axis we have speculative demand for money and y axis we have interest rate. This LF curve represents liquidity preference or we can say this LF curve represents how much money people are people wish to hold for speculative motive. As we know, interest rate and speculative demand for money have an inverse relation. When interest rate high, speculative demand for money will less. When interest rate less, speculative demand for money will high. 
In this diagram, you can see when interest rate is rising, speculative demand for money is reducing. When interest rate is reducing, speculative demand for money is rising, means both have an inverse relation. Over interest rate is very low interest rate. At this interest rate, people don't want to invest in money market because interest rate is very low. They will wait for future to rise in interest rate. But at presently, they will not invest in money market. They will hold their own liquidity, means they will hold their own cash, which they kept for speculative purpose. So we can say that OR interest rate, people will not invest in money market. They will hold their own cash, which they kept for speculative purpose. That's why you can see after E point, you can see our liquidity preference curve become horizontally which mainly tell us uh, people have absolutely liquidity preference they are not investing in money market they hold their own cash which they kept for speculative purpose and this part will be called liquidity trap now we are going to talk about cambridge cash balance approach this approach is given by cambridge economist like pigou and marshall and this approach gives so much importance to store value function of money. As we know, according to Fisher, money is just a medium of exchange, it means Fisher uh, theory don't give any importance to store value function of money. But this approach gives so much importance to store value function of money. And according to Cambridge economists, people wish to hold cash for finance transaction and for future security. Means this approach only talk about two motives transaction motive and precautionary motive but don't talk about speculative motive as we discussed in Keynesian theory. Now we will see equation of this approach MD equal to KPY here MD is a money demand P is a price level Y is a real income when we multiply Y with P it will become equal to nominal income means when we multiply price with real income it will become equal to nominal income so we can say that py is equal to nominal income and k is proportion of income that people want to hold as a cash for equilibrium level money supply must be equal to money dem demand so here we assume this m is money supply and we don't have any control on money supply money supply is fixed because money supply is decided by monetary authority M is money supply, MD is money demand. Here you can see money supply is equal to money demand. As we know money demand is equal to KPY. So in place of MD we can write KPY. So M is equal to KPY that means money supply is equal to money demand. According to this theory, at given money demand, if only money supply increase, then prices of goods and services will also increase. According to this theory, at a given money demand, only money supply increase, then prices of goods and services will also increase. But why? As we know, when money supply increase, that means there is more money in economy. Employer have more money to pay. As a result, our nominal income will also increase. When our income increase, we will increase demand for goods and services. If demand for goods and services continues increasing, that means prices of goods and services will also increase. So we can say that given money demand, if only money supply increase, then prices of goods and services will also increase. We will clearly understand this concept with the help of this diagram. In this diagram on y-axis, we have money demand and money supply. And x-axis, we have nominal income. As we earlier discussed, nominal income is equal to PY. Means when we multiply P with Y, it will become equal to nominal income. P is prices, Y is real income. Uh, and MS, MS1 are money supply curve. Money supply curve are horizontal because here we, here we assume money supply is fixed by monetary authority. MD and MD1 are money demand curve. A is our initial equilibrium point. At this equilibrium point, you can see OM is money supply and OM is money demand. Means money supply and money demand both are equal to OM. And prices are OP0 and nominal income is P0 Y. A is initial equilibrium point. Now suppose the money supply increase. As money supply increase, money supply curve will shift forward. Money supply curve shift forward from MS to MS1. This is our new money supply curve. A new equilibrium point is B. At this equilibrium point, you can see our uh, nominal income has increased from P0Y to P1Y1. If nominal income increase, demand will increase, as a result, prices will also increase. 
you can see at this B point our price is also increased from OP0 to OP1. So we can say that at given money demand, if only money supply increase, then prices of goods and services will also increase. So what will be happen if at given money supply, only money demand will reduce? If at given money supply, only money demand will reduce, then prices of goods and services will increase. But how? When at given money supply, only money demand reduce, that means money demand is less than money supply. Or we can say that money supply is more than money demand. When money supply is more than money demand, as a result, our nominal income will increase. Income increase, we will increase demand and prices of goods and services will also increase. So we can say that at given money supply, if only money demand reduce, then prices of goods and services will increase. Initial equilibrium point is A. Now suppose that given money supply, only money demand reduce. When money uh, demand reduce, money demand curve shift backward. This is our new money demand curve and new equilibrium point is C. At this equilibrium point, you can see our nominal income has increased from P0Y to P1Y1 and prices also increase because as nominal income increase, we increase demand for goods and services as a result prices of goods and services also increase. You can see our prices has increased from OP0 to OP1. So we can say that at given money supply, if only money demand reduce, then prices of goods and services will increase. So this is all about uh, Cambridge cash balance approach and Keynesian theory of uh, money demand. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.